I'm Maisie and I'm the Lead Practice Director at Panorama Associates and on today's episode of Public Health Spotlights we are joined by the Director of Public Health at Camden Council, Kirsten Waters. Hi, welcome. Um, so Kirsten, can you please provide a bit of like a brief history um, into your journey of becoming a Director of Public Health? Okay, so um, I did all my training in London and yeah. I was a consultant in public health in Southwark for about, I think it was five or six years. Um, and during the pandemic, obviously things changed a lot. There was a lot of movement and I sort of considered, I think during that time, um, applying for director of public health roles. Mm -hmm. And then, um, yes, so then I was successful um, in being appointed to Camden, sort of at the tail end of the pandemic. So it was a, a year of working remotely, um, which was, I think, strange and, and slightly difficult in terms of coming into a new director role. Yeah. Um, in, you know, into a, into a local authority that you sort of hadn't been to in terms of their, their council buildings. And I've been here for three years now. Nice, okay. And what is the role of Director of Public Health to you? And I guess why Camden? Okay, so, um, I mean, Camden's a really interesting part of London. We are the central, you know, sort of borough of London. Um, it's got its own challenges, I think, in terms of public health. We've got a really mobile population. We've got a really unequal population. So there's something okay. that attracted me about sort of you know, the practice of public health in, in Camden. Yep. We've got three large major train sort of transport networks. And um, I think also as a local authority is really innovative. It's, you know, it describes itself as having a rebellious spirit. So there was something about the organizational culture that um, really attracted me to, to the role as well. Um, so it was a combination, I think, of sort of the population and public health aspects as well as the organizational culture. Cool. And I guess what makes the population unique in Camden? Okay, so I think, well, it's really mobile. I mean, there's something around the practice of public health in really highly urban areas. Yeah. It's got quite a complex, I think, provider landscape. We've got a lot of hospitals. Yeah. We've got even more universities. We've got a lot of train stations. Um, and we have large sort of, you know, like other sort of neighbouring boroughs like Westminster. We've got a large sort of day population, as well as our resident population which is so unequal in terms of health inequalities. You know, we've got sort of King's Cross and Summers Town to some of the most wealthy houses in the country in terms of Hampstead and Belsize Park. So um, there's something about being able to do public health and do public health well um, in that context. Sure. And obviously, like, given the, the London is, like, entirely urban, is there any sort of specific opportunities or any real challenges that that would bring? So I think, I mean, I think from our sort of, DPH perspective, London's really networked together in the DPH world. Yeah. I know the other DPHs, they're very supportive. We meet regularly. We do lots of London collaborations, so that's you know, a huge opportunity. Um, there's lots of other sort of anchor institutions in, in London from, you know, hospitals to, to business. So there's something, I guess, exciting about practising public health like that. And then I guess there's the challenges of London. You know, lot, really mobile populations and make public health. I think challenging and particularly um, when you're looking at population outcomes, you know, 30% turnover, they're not the same people as they were at the beginning of the year. Um, and also something about the health inequalities. You know, yeah. London is a fantastic city, but it's also a very unequal city. Mm -hmm. And I guess what has been the most rewarding experience so far as a DPH for you? It's been lots. <laughs> um, I think my first annual public health report um, which was on adolescent health was really rewarding, partly because we really, really engaged young people. And it was after the pandemic, so it was the sort of the first time we felt that we really got back yeah. out into working in person closely yeah. with communities. And we asked um, our young people to do something creative with the annual public health report because often they get put on the shelf. Yeah. And they created a graphic novel. Oh, okay. um, and they produced it entirely themselves yeah. um, with supportive comms at Camden. I think I just had a, a read through that actually. Yeah, yeah. It looked really, really good. And we had an event with them yeah. and it was just, just fantastic. It was inspiring to see yeah. young people so engaged in, in their health nice. and also how creative they were in conceptualising how they were being. Cool. And I guess any like real particular challenge that you feel like you've overcome as being a DPH? in particular so challenges I mean I think you know being a DPH is very different to being a consultant yeah. I think you hold a corporate role yeah. as well as a DPH role and yeah. that corporate role was new for me so I sit on the chief execs team so there's there's something around what your corporate leadership is and what your DPH leadership is so that was definitely a learning curve okay um and I think sometimes you feel 
as a DPH, you give all the fun and exciting stuff yeah. to consultants and sort of yeah. what is the practice of public health for yourself. So that can yeah. be, I think, challenging personally. Yeah. And given that it's quite a big jump or of quite a different role to being a consultant to a director in public health, is there any particular skill that you'd wish you developed before becoming a director of public health? I think I think it's understanding what that corporate leadership role is. Yeah. And understanding what the difference is are and when you need to be in your DPH leadership mode and when you need to be in your corporate leadership mode and understanding the, the role of a corporate director, if you are a corporate director as well, is sometimes quite different. So you work with your corporate colleagues to hold the organisation as well as your sort of DPH professional and sort of practice role as well. And is there any particular advice you could give to a consultant about how they could gain that experience? In a easier, like yeah. more easy. Before. I think talking to talking to, yeah. to, to, to corporate directors, I'm really understanding sort of the mechanisms yeah. of how local government works cool. because you are in a local government organisation. Yeah. Um, so really understanding that political decision making. Yeah. Understanding what that means to work in that kind of organisation and understanding the role of officers as well. I think is really important. And then obviously you must have sat on um, a number of sort of panels for interviews. Um, is there any particular tips or advice you would give to a consultant interviewing for a director of public health role? I think for me it's really understanding the borough which you're interviewing for. Sure. I mean that goes without saying <laughs> you'd understand the population but also understanding what the organisational culture of that council is, you know, what what's their political aspirations, like, you know, yeah. what's their leaders manifesto, yeah. what are they trying to achieve in terms of their sort of corporate outcomes, what are their major documents? What, yeah. what, what drives them organisationally? I think it's really important to demonstrate an understanding of that okay. as well um, as all of the public health challenges because you need to be able to leverage some of those in order to meet some public health outcomes through the population. Cool. And for sort of a future director of public health, what do you think the biggest priorities in public health look like in the future? <laughs> um, and I would say this because I've got a specialist interest in children yeah. and young people, but I do think, you know, child and adolescent public health is really important. You know, we yeah. don't have a, I think, a sort of, you know, in England or sort of a national child and adolescent public health strategy. There's something around that and hidden voices, and particularly if you look at mental health. I think inequalities is going to remain, you know, a theme forever. Um, how do we really leverage our role in local government still? I think there's some untapped work that we could still do. Yeah. Um, and then there's obviously all of the learning from the pandemic where public health um, sure. you know, was so high profile. How can we build on some of those successes to really make sure that we're embedding public health? Yeah. And then there's also all the changes within the NHS that you have to keep on top of yeah. and keep those relationships going. And then you're a member of the ADPH. What does that mean to you? Well, it's a source of support hugely. Yeah. I think it's um, really, really useful in terms of the work that we're doing across London. Um, I'm the ADPH London lead for immunisations and yeah. I'm also the children's sponsor. So I'm quite involved in some of the ADPH work. I just think it offers huge opportunity for consultants as well. I think that would be a tip for consultants that it offers you an opportunity to really work across London and get to know mm -hmm. other people. So it's really good for networking. Sure. Um, and I think for myself as a DPH, it enables me to still do some public health work yeah. um, on top of everything else. So um, it's you know, hugely valuable. And what are the benefits and opportunities um, of working in a political environment? So I think... I mean, for consultants, I think it's really important that you gain experience in working with elective members um, and understanding what they want um, from the DPH. So, you know, what I think that members want is that you're an authoritative voice on health and well-being across the system. It's really important to, to get good relationships with your elected members and your leader. Um, and I think you do that by being good at public health and being trustworthy, being authentic in your leadership. And also seeing the opportunities of working, you know, in a political organisation is that members are really motivated to, to, to really improve outcomes in their local community. And they're hugely embedded in local communities. So they're such a huge source, I think, of sort of knowledge about what's happening within, you know, within communities, within your borough. And obviously you worked as a consultant in public health. Um, when did you feel like you were ready to take that jump from being a consultant to being a director of public health? So I, th I think I thought about it for about a year before I started applying for, for DPH roles. I mean, I really enjoyed being a consultant in yeah. public health. And I think it's, you know, it's a hugely interesting job. And I had a portfolio that I loved. Um, I did the um, Birmingham Inspiring Leadership Programme. I think that was really useful. 
really helped me think about my leadership journey. So I thought about it for probably for about a year. And for me, it was about um, not wanting to sort of sort of drift within my consultant portfolio. So I think if I hadn't been successful as a DPH, I might have looked for another sort of opportunity, maybe in a different sort of type of organisation. Um, and I think, you know, my tips for people would be to really think about your leadership skills as the consultant. You know public health because you're already doing it. So uh, the next step is about leadership um, and it's about strategic leadership. And I think going on a leadership course helps you do that. And outside sort of the Birmingham leadership course, are there any other particular leadership courses that you're aware of that you would recommend? Or I, think, I mean, I think there's, there's lots. I think what's, if you're choosing any of them, it's, it's focusing on not sort of public health leadership, but your leadership yeah. skills, because you will be asked about them in, a, in an interview. Organisations are interested in how you lead. Um, and it's how you lead as a person rather than, I guess, in the theory of leadership. So, and I think for consultants to think about their own leadership journey is really important and their own leadership skills and also areas for development because, you know, everyone has areas of development and, and um, to think about that in the context of the organisation in which you're applying for as well, because whether you're looking at sort of a national organisation or local government, they're going to require slightly different things. Now, one piece of final advice or any words of wisdom you've got for anyone considering a role as a DPH? Um, I think it's really doing your research on, on the organisation, on, on the local authority that you're applying for, really understand what they want, what the opportunities are. And there's something about having faith as you go through the interview process that it will be a good, a mutual good fit. Yeah. Um, you know, not to get disheartened if you, know, you don't get a DPH role. It is something about sort of that, that fit between you, uh, the organisation and the culture as well. Well, thank you so, so much for thank your time. You. Um, really, really appreciate it. And yeah, we hope everyone watching enjoyed it as well. Thank, thank you. you.